Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games and welcome back to another Minor Monday. Today I am going to be showing Minor Monday report number 8, Sao Paulo, Goi, uh, Garo, Para, and other map changes that are happening to Brazil. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Brazil, when 0.7 comes out, is going to be getting a radical overhaul. Really, a lot of South America is, but uh, Brazil is the most obvious. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is that they've spread out the victory points in Brazil. Of course, they're still going to mostly be concentrated on the coast, but now that there's these splinter areas, some of the splinter nations that were being created did not even have any victory points inside of them. Uh, so some victory points have now been spread out a little bit more evenly. Uh, the other major map change is that certain parts of the Amazon Basin are going to be impassable. So as you can see, uh, next to the river here, you have these uh, impassable areas, kind of like uh, in certain mountain ranges and stuff that you'll see around the Kaiserreich map. So you have to keep your forces close to the river if you want to keep them supplied. Uh, and this, so you can't just run your army right through uh, some of the most impassable and unexplored jungle in the world. Uh, an invasion from the north is not going to go very well if you're invading Brazil. You're going to have to be a lot smarter about it now. Although if you do invade the north, that's where the rubber is, so you can take that from your enemies if, uh, if you're trying to do that. They've also, uh, there's, there's also a doggo in the corner. Uh, they've also created new air regions, so it should make their forces, you know, it, it should just be cleaner, apparently. Uh, so that, that's a look at what that's going to look like. All right, now first of the splinter nations that we're going to be looking at here is Sao Paulo. That's the one in the black here. And I'm sorry, I couldn't find a picture bigger than this one. But anyway, so Sao Paulo's focus tree, they claim that they are the national capital. They could do a few interesting things here. Uh, for example, they can actually encourage uh, Japanese immigrants to come into the country, for example. Uh, and they can also start going down here and eventually build a new battleship. It looks like there's some economy stuff here. Over here is the military. This seems to be industry right here. Uh, and this is mostly, I would imagine, the political tree. I'm noticing it says Republican tradition over here. And Primero Palistas is there. Research slot is probably this one, the higher learning centers. We've got urbanization efforts, taxation reforms, things like that. Okay, the second of the splinter nations we're going to be looking at here is Goyaz. That is the one here to the northwest of Sao Paulo. Now, Goyaz, oop, that's not it. Goyaz is very isolated because it's in the interior, and they're going to have a cattle-based economy, so you're going to be working on that, but they can eventually provide special forces. Uh, so they've got that going on down here. There's also a little bit of air stuff going on here. They can also fortify themselves. It looks like the industry stuff is on this side of the tree. I'm noticing they're seizing foreign assets. That probably also helps their industry, but I'm wondering if there's any specific foreigner, uh, foreign countries that are gonna get angry about this. And then this is probably science right there. Okay, and then the third of the splinter states we're gonna be looking at here is Grau, uh, Grau Barra. Uh, which is the northernmost one here. That's uh, where we saw some of these impassable areas by the Amazon Basin. So they can build some railroads, potentially. Uh, they have several railroad focuses here. They're going to increase their, in, uh, their infrastructure. And it's supposed to also, while being expensive, increase their resource output. So I'm curious about how this works. Does that mean that it's going to give them more infrastructure? And then like when we get in uh, the vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, the increased infrastructure is going to increase the amount of resources that you're pulling out of it. Or is that is that going to be a global effect? Or is it going to be specifically in this focus tree, you can increase the infrastructure and as a result you get more resource output? So is it going to be just exclusive to this country? It also appears like they're going to be able to uh, be able to assert their independence because it says so right here, and they can create some armed forces of their own. You've got river warfare down here, but I'm also noticing some trackers and explorer things here. So I'm anticipating that they're going to be able to get abilities that increase their effectiveness in jungle terrain, or maybe something like they they're better on core territory or when they're by a river, their infantry and things like that. Uh, another research slot down here. We got some more mining efforts here. It looks like there's diamonds, gold. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this is down here. It could possibly be rubber, because rubber is sometimes collected in a bucket or a bowl. I'm not totally sure. Um, and then they've got a fair amount of uh, air focuses, it looks like. Uh, ruling the air, bomber novels, 
bomber models airlifts long range flights so I wonder if this increases the range because that would be very useful in Brazil and then green above blue below uh, it should be interesting to see how it's gonna play out and that's basically the minor Monday number eight uh, I think I covered everything that's here pretty much yeah so I'll see you guys in the next one subscribe if you haven't already bye